Hi friends! Welcome back, I am DJ Montague and I've been cooking in the kitchen. And today, we're gonna get this Bloodlands build going. I've been trying to make Bloodlands work, I've been trying to make Blood Surge work, and I think I finally got some sauce for you guys. So, first, we're gonna start off with the Overpower build. And then, we're gonna go into my secret recipe that I think is the future of what Bloodlands currently is. Stay tuned, this is juicy, and I think you're gonna love it. Let's get into it. First of all, let's just get this overpower Bloodlands build as fast as we can out of the way so I can get you to the goodness, the good, good stuff. Now, this is the standard version of the Bloodlands build I think most people are gonna use, um, and it works really well, and it can progress in a lot of nightmares, and you can make this work and, and progress very, very high into the end game content. Do I think that this build can kill Lilith? I don't think so. But I do have a Bloodlance build that I think can do it. And we're going to share that today. So, starting off, Aspect of the Embalmer, pretty much like must take on somewhere on your body. Um, I think Blood Artisan's Curse is fantastic for this particular build the way I have it set up. So, use that if you can get it if you don't want it or you don't want to use it um we're looking for max life damage reduction total armor damage reduction while fortified on chest piece uh title aspect on hands easy um we're also looking for lucky hit lucky hit chance to restore resource overpower damage ranks of bloodlands or attack speed or attack speed want to make sure you know that attack speed is really good here as well um pants temerity because of how many blood orbs we get i think that this is actually really really strong if you don't feel like you want to use Temerity, Max Life, Total Armor, Damage Reduction, Dodge, Chance, all good. Um, and then you would use here, you would take Aspect of Disobedience. Uh, by, uh, for the chess piece, I would say you could take uh, the Aspect of Healthy, or Aspect of the Protector, um, for when you get damage reduced, you create that dome. I think that one's pretty good. Um, you can kind of use any other uh, armor increase or or any other defensive in the chess piece here. Um, and here, um, we actually switched this up. It's Ghost Walker. I had the wrong one on there. Uh, so Ghost Walker, uh, while unstoppable, you uh, get increased movement speed. This helps for when you are using uh, Blood Mist, which reduces your movement speed by 20%. So this actually will increase your movement speed by 5%. And then, yeah, yeah. Anyways, Essence, Cost Reduction, Movement Speed, Ranks of Bone Spear, if you have Blood Artisans, Curious, if you do not have Blood Artisans, uh, you take um, you take Damage Reduction while Injured, and Dodge Chance, it being your last stat, here. Um, weapon, which I think is a wand, uh, currently D4 builds does not have the correct aspect here, um, but I just wanted to make sure that you know. Aspect of Hungry Blood is really good on the wand, um, and wand is what we'll be taking. Overpower all stats, main stats, core skill damage here. Uh, the core skill damage is not on here because, again, or sorry, the uh, the main stat is not on here. Again, because of the interactions, the way things work with overpower, uh, the only thing that really matters is your overpower damage and getting willpower is the only real way you can increase overpower damage. So that's what we're focused on um, here on the weapons themselves. Otherwise, everything else, it's max life on overpower damage. Uh, moving on to the other weapon, Aspect of Grasping Veins, I personally think is the take with a focus, because I think we have enough def defensives with having max um, Fortify, our max health is really high, having Temerity, I think that we have enough defense to actually survive a lot of things, and we're getting enough Blood Orbs so that we're not getting one shot, and being able to maintain that health and continue uh, progressing through dungeons very quickly. I think you also have enough CC with this build to really make it shine. But anyways, so aspect of grasp grasping veins on a focus. If you are not taking a focus and you are taking a shield, but you're also taking Blood Artisan's Curious and taking Temerity, which you absolutely can do, I would recommend taking Disobedience in the offhand slot. Uh, so aspect of grasping veins can actually, if you're taking a focus here, can be put in your amulet slot as well. These two are interchangeable. Um, we got to do some more testing, but Gore Quills 
and aspect of grasping veins, uh, the way they interact can, it's, it's varied on how much damage you could possibly do, but ideally, uh, I would personally take grasping veins in the amulet slot. Anyways, lucky hit chance, max life, essence cost reduction, willpower, or if you're taking a shield, lucky hit chance to in, uh, restore essence, uh, max life, lucky hit, willpower, same thing. Um, these, this offhand is incredibly important, I think, to the blood build in general, because uh, most of the overpower's attacks don't have anything to do with your weapon's damage, really, at all. So it's based on your max life and fortify. Uh, Gorkul's aspect on neck, um, two things that I think are important are ranks of coalesced blood and ranks, uh, ranks of the tides of blood passive. Uh, the two other affixes you're looking for essence cost reduction total armor if you don't get essence cost reduction movement speeds also really good because we slow as fuck boy anyways <clears throat> rings fast blood aspect i am taking blood wave and i think that you should too uh because of how many blood orbs that we create i think that this can be really really awesome for the amount of blood lances that we're producing at any given time um, overpower damage, max life, lucky hit chance, barrier generation, if you have temerity, if you don't have temerity, max essence. So, um, those are the rings, potent blood on the other ring, these two can only go on rings, so make sure you're doing that. Uh, weapon, obviously overpower damage, if you're taking a shield, uh, you would take a defensive, um, you would take a de defensive gem in your shield, um, like the ruby, max health. Um, if you're taking a focus, obviously, overpowered him. Lots of rubies to go around. Uh, so, Sacrilegious, this uh, heart is so insane, and I think everybody knows it by now that it's broken. It's so ridiculous. Take Sacrilegious. Um, revenge is pretty good. Um, just in the damage reduction is fantastic. Take Revenge, especially if you're pushing higher tiers in Nightmares. And then... Uh, Malignant Pact works for this build because of the increased attack speed, and the core and basic skills have a 20% chance to fully restore your primary resource. More lances is always great, and being able to dump lances at, at will and maintain essence is always going to be help helpful. Uh, the last part of the aspect, Brutal, every 16 seconds gain a barrier, that's totally like super weak. If you don't want to take Malignant Pact, and if we find out that the Great Feast actually works with overpower damage, please take the Great Feast. Uh, this is going to be something that we're, a lot of people are going to be testing. I think that the Great Feast could be one of the most, if not the most insane, uh, malignant heart they've made in this game. Like, what, what, what they gave Necromancer for this season is unreal. Unreal. Anyways, uh, the Great Feast is your other option. Skills, uh, to start off, we're taking Hemorrhage, we're taking Bloodlance, we're taking Blood Mist, we're taking Blood Wave, we're taking Corpse Tendies, we're taking Corpse Explosion for Essence Gain, uh, Sacrifices, we're taking Non-Physical Resistance, um, Overpower, I mean, none of these really matter. If you really want to get spicy with it, take the Crit Strike Chance, because you are taking Grasping Veins, uh, helps out a little bit there to get an extra Crit Strike, um, for extra damage. Overpower damage here is a no-brainer, and uh, max life or max attack speed, so, or increased attack speed, all good choices. And here on D4 builds, we have the full list down here of your stats, what you're looking for on gear. Let's go over the skill tree and go through this real quick. Hemorrhage, uh, three points. Bloodlance, at least three points. Uh, imperfectly balanced, uh, three points once it gets fixed. Uh, Hued flesh, um, three points must take. <clears throat> Blood Mist, up to the point of getting the Corpses, uh, Corpse Explosion, you can actually remove the last two points, you only need the one point in Corpse Explosion because we're using that specifically for Essence Gain, especially with the um, Sacrilegious Malignant Heart. Uh, Grim Harvest, always must, uh, Fueled by Death, uh, again, must. Uh, Death's Reach, incredible. Also, if you are taking points out of Corpse Explosion, and also with the points you don't have in imperfect, imperfectly balanced, 
If you are at end game and you want to use Decrepify, you can remove Hemorrhage, you can remove the point of Hemorrhage, you can remove some points from Bloodlands itself because Overpower is the most important thing, not ranks of the skill. And you can get three points in Decrepify, up to a Born Decrepify, and also take Amplify Damage, which is another 12% increased damage, which does work with Overpower. So, uh, next, Gruesome Mending 1 point, three points in Coalesce Blood, three points in Tides of Blood, three points in Drain Vitality. Again, Tides of Blood and Coalesce Blood are the important ones that you're looking for when you are rolling your amulet. Corpse Tendies, uh, going up to create blood orbs, super good. 35% chance to create blood orbs, and it happens like every two seconds that you are making corpses on the ground where you're throwing Tendies out and there's just orbs everywhere, and reducing the cooldown of your ultimate, and it's just crazy. It's all synergistic and it's lovely. Um, Inspiring Leader, increased attack speed, always worth. Blood Wave, more Blood Orbs, please, please more Blood Orbs. We take Title Aspect, nine Blood Orbs is insane. Uh, standalone, 18% damage reduction. Memento Mori for the increased sacrifice stat. Rathma's Vigor, pretty self-explanatory. And the Paragon Board, let's go through this really quickly. Uh, Macro Bio Boy basically workshopped this thing to like a, the perfect degree. We're looking for max life. I cannot thank him enough for the effort that he's put into this and the amount of thought process he's put into this. It's insane. Highly recommend uh, you give him a follow on Twitch, give him a follow wherever you can. Dude's uh, a criminal mastermind of the Necromancer. And uh, this Paragon board, I've changed a few points around, but inherently it is the, the, the framework is macros and I added like a little fucking salt on it. It's not like I added a, a ton to it or did anything like really substantial i changed a few things around that's all anyways starting board uh blood drinker second board control again we are looking for max life and overpower damage specifically um and fortify increases don't really matter damage while fortified doesn't matter for anything other than your uh white damage and your crits so stuff like that we don't really pick up but we do need that max life we get in that so we're going out of two exits of this board. So we're going out top and we're going out right. And specifically because we're going up to bone graft, we're gonna get the essence on kill. This is super helpful for the build. Uh, we're getting more max life, more armor, more defensives, always good. We're taking sacrificial here. Um, we're taking a little bit of defense here to make sure that we activate sacrificial. <clears throat> Um, and then we are moving out to the right for our fourth board, which is Blood Begets Blood. Now, overpower damage here is the important take, and then you are stopping on the Blood Begets Blood board for the moment. And then we go out of the right side of Scent of Death. Now, and, or sorry, into Scent of Death. Now, we're taking Dominate here. Now, again, What's important to note here is that you can take Dominate early. This is an end game Paragon board when you have 225 points. So remember that once you're done with the board is when this really comes online completely. But you can use Dominate in other slots until you get to the very end of the board at level 100. So uh, we're taking Dominate here. We are taking Scent of Death, even though the damage increase doesn't work with Overpowers. Uh, it's just currently a weird bug or inter interaction, or I don't know if Blizzard meant to do it, but that's the way it is. Max Life over here, and then we're going up, back into Blood Begets Blood, getting more Max Life, getting more defensives, and taking, personally, I think Amplify here. Uh, you can take other aspects currently, uh, like the Imbiber, because you will be healthy a lot. Gravekeeper, if you're interested. Um, gosh, territorial could work. So, like, if you're not going to use Decrepify, you can opt out of Amplify. So, that is a Paragon board. That's pretty much the entire Overpower build in itself. I'm sorry this was so long to explain it. There's a lot of moving parts here with the way the build works. Um, and I, I just really want you guys to know that overpower does work, but again, like I said, I don't think it ends up killing Lilith. And that's kind of where we're all getting to. Lilith is the 
uber boss in the end game that's what we're all striving to uh be able to kill in pve content i know it's a very isolated way to uh, view builds but it is important to use it as a benchmark for single target damage i think that it's really good even though i know that multiple mobs are the way of the game and it's not single target damage being the true end game anyways so that's the first overpower build uh, this ran a little bit longer than I wanted to, so I'm actually going to make a second video. Uh, check that out over here, hopefully up at the top. Um, thank you guys for checking this video out. You were wonderful. I hope this build works wonders for you and you absolutely smash stuff. And stay tuned. We're cooking sauce in the kitchen. Uh, follow me on Twitch, twitch.tv slash DJ Like, comment, subscribe, all that fun stuff. I'll see you in a second.